look at where we are. Friday the 11th, we're going to talk about linear equations and rational equations today. More importantly than what's happening today is what's happening Monday. Okay, so Monday, I'm going to give you a take-home quiz. So Monday at the end of class, before you leave, I'm going to give you a quiz to take home, and it will be due Wednesday. Right? Um, and Monday, project one is due. Now, projects, if you're going to go test heavy, projects count for 0%, but like I suggested last class, do the first project, right? At least, you know, get that one in there. That way, um, you know, you'll get a good exposure, exposure to GeoGebra, and you'll have the first project done as you go into test one. So, like, you won't, if you bomb test one, you'll be like, okay, well, I'm going to go test light, you know, and you'll have the first project already done. Project one? Nope. Right on the syllabus right here. It says Monday, stuff due, project one. <laughs> you might have thought that because on because last class I gave you some time to work on the project. Maybe you thought that meant it was due next class. Nope. <laughs> All right, questions about the schedule. Project one due Monday, quiz one due Wednesday. And I'll give that to you on Monday. Oh. Okay, why don't you take um, five minutes or so, work through the preview exercises, and then we'll start the demo. All right, let's go through some of these together. So I want to multiply and simplify this expression. So before I start working on this, any idea why for this particular um, difference of two fractions, I'm multiplying by 12. Why 12? It's the common denominator of 4 and 3. Yeah. So we're going to be dealing with fractions today. So um, the reason I'm multiplying by 12 is because it's the common denominator. So you have to distribute the 12 to both of these fractions, right? So we have 12 times x plus 2 over 4 minus 12 times x minus 1 over 3. And think of these as 12 over 1. Okay. And then the we have a 12 on top and a 4 on the bottom, so you can reduce those. What is 12 over 4 reduced to? 3 over 1, right? So this becomes 3 times x plus 2, right? The 12, 4 goes into 4 once, and it goes into 12 3 times. So this becomes 3 times x plus 2 minus, and then you do a similar thing with the 12 over 3. Like, how many times does 3 go into 3? Once. Yeah, you were answering a different question. 3 goes into 3 one time, and 3 goes into 12 four times. So that simplifies to 4 times x minus 1. Okay. So then you just distribute 3x plus 6. Distribute a negative 4, right? Because whenever you have a subtraction sign, you can also treat it like a negative sign glued to the number after it. So that's a negative 4 being distributed. So I have negative 4x plus 4. Three, then I combine my like terms. 3x minus 4x is negative x. 6 plus 4 is 10. If you got negative x plus 2, you just didn't distribute the negative sign. right? You got a little sign error right there if you had negative 2. Or if you had 2. All right, so for this one, um, I think that everybody who started it got it. Um, you get x equals 3. We'll just leave it at that. If you have a question on that one, be sure to ask a neighbor or me when you're working through the activities. So the solution set is, remember we learned set, build, set notation on the first day of class. That's, you just list all the numbers that are solutions in curly brackets. And um, like, this isn't super important to me, but my math lab always gives you the curly brackets to list your solutions, so I just want to make sure that you're familiar with it. You're not like, what is this curly bracket thing? 
Okay, and then the last one, we've got an equation with uh, fractions in it. We've got denominators. What is the common denominator between 4, 6, and 3? 12. Yeah, that's the least common multiple of 4, 6, and 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 12. Okay, so um, I saw Cody, I think, actually had a really cool technique that I like. Um, to get the common denominator first. Sometimes, some people prefer to do it this way. So I'm going to do, I did the first one just multiplying by the 12 and reducing. This one I'm going to get the common denominator. So x plus 1 over 4 to make a common denominator of 12, you'd multiply that fraction by 3 over 3. 1 over 6, what do I have to multiply the top and bottom by? 2 over 2. 2 over 2. And then the last one I have to multiply by 4 over 4. So my new fractions become 3x plus 3 over 12 equals 2 over 12 plus 8 minus 2x, sorry, 8 minus 4x over 12. Now that you have a common denominator, every single fraction has the same denominator, now it's, it's a little bit clearer what happens when you multiply both sides by 12, right? Now all the denominators just go away, right? 12 times something divided by 12, the 12s cancel, and you just get 3x plus 3. 12 times 2 divided by 12, times 12 and divided by 12, that cancel, and you get 2. And then 8 minus 4x divided by 12 times 12, the 12s cancel, and you just get 8 minus 4x. So you can go either way, right? You can just immediately jump to multiplying by 12, or you can get the common denominator first and then multiply by 12, whichever feels more natural to you. To finish solving this, I get 7x equals 13. Yeah, uh, so x is 13 sevenths. Did I do it right? Is that right? Oh, where's my mistake? Ah, you got to subtract 3 from both sides, not add 3 to both sides. Ah, uh, good thing I have a smart class. So I get 7x equals this 2 plus 8 is 10. Subtract 3 from both sides, and you get 7. Divide both sides by 7, and you get x is 1. Thank you. Okay, so do you agree that it's easier to solve a linear equation if there are no fractions in it? Yes. So there is a way to get rid of all the fractions. We just did it in the preview exercises. You multiply both sides by the common denominator. Okay. So this is the problem we just did, right? <laughs> Good. So um, since I just did it in the previous one, getting the common denominator first, let's just see how it works if you just immediately jump to multiplying by 12. Instead of getting a common denominator of 12 first, I'm just going to say, well, the common denominator is 12. Multiply both sides by it. So. Now when I do this, my 12 over 4 reduces to a 3. So I have 3 times x plus 1. 1 6 times 12 becomes 2. And 2 minus x over 3 times 12, we, the 12 over 3 reduces to 4. So you can, this is the exact same equation we had before, right? Where, where you got the common denominator then multiplied by 12. So we get 3x plus 3 equals 2 plus 8 minus 4x, and we're all done. Right? Same, same thing as before. x equals 1. I'm going to have to write this all out. We should always check our solution. So our original equation was x plus 1 over 4 
equals one sixth plus two minus x over three. And we got x equals one, so we should be able to go back and put a one in for all the x's and show that the two sides of the equation are equal. So 1 plus 1 over 4, that's 1 half. 2 over 4 is 1 half. And 1 sixth plus 1 third, which is 3 sixths or 1 half. Check. This is a good habit to get into. You can never go wrong, right? You know, you'll know whether you got the problem right or wrong, no matter what kind of equation you're solving. Okay, so we've solved a rational equation that had constants, 4, 6, and 3. They're just regular old numbers as the denominator in the denominators. But now we're going to solve them where the denominators actually have um, expressions involving x. Right, so it's just going to be the exact same approach, the exact same rules. We're just going to have some x's now. Very similar to before. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator. So we'll do an example here. Before we even start, we should write down what values x cannot be, right? So I can't ever let de a denominator be what? Zero. Zero. So if I look at my, my original equation, what values of x do I immediately exclude? Zero, because that would make the first fraction have a denominator of zero. And x squared minus x, what values would make that 0? Um, definitely 1, because 1 squared minus 1 is 0. 2, 2 squared minus 2 is 2, so that's OK. I heard a negative 1. Negative 1 squared minus negative 1 is 1 plus 1, which is OK. It's just 2. So it's just 0 and 1. So I just write those down first, right? So immediately I know those things cannot be solutions because they make the, something undefined. So now I start by um, factoring everything I can. So I've got 1 over x plus 1 over x squared minus x. What's the GCF there? x. I'm going to factor out an x or like reverse distribute an x. So I have x times x minus 1 equals 5 over 1. I'm just going to write everything as fraction, um, totally factored out. So if I were going to get a common denominator, this first fraction, it's got an x in it. Looking at what it has and what the other fraction denominators are made up of, I want them all to be the same. What is this one missing? x minus 1. I'm going to multiply this one by x minus 1 over x minus 1. Second fraction, is that missing anything? It's got an x, it's got an x minus 1. Is there anything in this fraction that this one doesn't have? A 1, yeah, just a 1, but like one, you can multiply by 1 over 1, it doesn't change anything, right? Um, and then, so this, this middle fraction is all set. It's already got the common denominator. And then this last fraction, what's it, what's it missing? Yeah, it's missing an x and an x minus 1. So you multiply the top and bottom by that, getting a common denominator. So you just ask yourself, what is it missing? Like, given what all the other fractions have, what is it missing? All right, so this first fraction, when I multiply these together, my numerator becomes x minus 1. x minus 1 times 1 is x minus 1. Over my common denominator, x times x minus 1. Plus, this one didn't change at all. 1 over x times x minus 1 equals 5x times x minus 1 over x times x minus 1. All right, so now I've got all of my fractions have the same denominator. 
I'd love to just get rid of the denominators. How do I get rid of them? Multiply both sides by the denominator. Okay. Multiply both sides by x times x minus 1. And then all my denominators cancel with the x times the x minus 1 I multiplied by. Cancel, 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 cancel. So all I'm left with is x minus 1 plus 1 equals 5x times x minus 1. Minus 1 plus 1, those go away. x equals, if I distribute this, I get 5x squared minus 5x. Ooh, anybody remember from a previous class how to solve a quadratic equation? When there's a squared in there? You could factor, you could use a quadratic formula. To do either of those things, what has to be true first? One side has to be zero. Good. So I'm going to move the x from the left over to the right and subtract x from both sides. So 0 is 5x squared minus 6x. GCF of 5x squared minus 6x? x. x. I can pull out an x from both of those terms. x times 5x minus 6. Right, so I factored. What's the point of factoring when your equation equals zero? Why does factoring help? Yeah, it gets rid of the square. Yeah, that's definitely helpful. Then what do, now what do I do at this point? Nobody remembers? Nope. Nope. If I multiply two things together, I'm just just picture, I'm multiplying two numbers together and the answer is zero. What do you know about at least one of those two numbers? Had to be zero, right? The only way to get zero as the answer to a multiplication problem is if one of your numbers was zero. One or both, right? So I set each of the factors to zero. Either x was zero or 5x minus 6 was zero. So there's a solution. And this one says x equals 6 fifths is a solution. But what? No. x equals zero is definitely not a solution, right? We wrote it down at the very beginning. So that's what we call an extraneous solution. Algebra led us astray here, right? So that's called extraneous, or like the root of it being extra, extra solution that popped out that's not really a solution. So x equals 6 fifths here. This whole factoring, setting equal to 0, we're going to review that a lot more in, in a few weeks. But it just as a little, I wouldn't expect you to do this on a quiz or a test, but until until we officially review it. But it is something that you should have seen before and be you know semi familiar with. I added six to both sides and then divided both sides by five. Five x equals six. Sure, sure. 